Louis Cartier. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Broadcasting and asks, how will the Television New Zealand Amendment Bill provide appropriate assurance to ensure the participation of Māori and the presence of a significant Māori voice in its programmes and programme planning? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Jonathan Coleman. Mr. Speaker, the Television New Zealand Amendment Bill replaces the TVNZ Charter with a new set of statutory functions which state, amongst other things, that TVNZ must provide high quality content that reflects Maori perspectives. I, I would also note that out of a total public broadcasting budget of $231 million, $81 million is reserved specifically for Maori broadcasting, ensuring the participation of Maori and the presence of a significant Maori voice in programmes and programme planning in state-funded broadcasting. Rahui Kautanei. Supplementary to the Minister, how does the Government plan to give effect to binding decisions of the Court of Appeal and the Privy Council in relation to the broadcasting of Māori language and content on mainstream television in prime time? And what feedback has he received from Māori about the risk of diluting Māori content in TVNZ transmissions by his proposal to remove the Charter and replacing it with a very broad statement of function. The Honourable Jonathan Colwell. Well, Mr Speaker, answering the second part first, I've had one letter uh, which was sent to the Minister of Maori Affairs which was subsequently forwarded to my office. In regards to the first part, the Government gives effect to these decisions through New Zealand On Air and Te Mangai Paho. Te Mangai Paho directly funds the Maori television service and also makes contestable funding available to other broadcasters, including TVNZ. TVNZ will continue to be eligible to apply for this funding, and one of New Zealand On Air's statutory requirements is to promote Maori language and culture. Mr Speaker, in what ways will the government measure the success of TVNZ as a public broadcaster in terms other than ratings and revenue, and how will it measure non-commercial success? The Honourable Jonathan Coleman. Mr Speaker, TVNZ is required to produce a statement of intent each year which outlines its plans for the forthcoming year and it then reports against these aims in its annual report. Shareholding ministers also write to TVNZ at the start of each financial year outlining specific expectations of the company and those expectations are discussed periodically throughout the year with Television New Zealand. Brendan Burns. Supplementary question to the Minister. Why did the Minister tell last Friday's Sparta conference that his TVNZ amendment bill, quote, leaves TVNZ free to determine its own priorities, unquote, when in fact the bill tells TVNZ its only task is to maximise revenues with no specific requirement for any New Zealand content, be it for Māori audiences or anyone else. The Honourable Jonathan Gould. Well, Mr Speaker, that's not actually correct. The Charter has been replaced with a set of statutory functions which are laid out in the bill. Question number five, Joe Goodhue. 